Hello everybody, I'm Ben Robbins from the Lost World of Movie Props. I'm here with Mark Wiggett from The Bill, EastEnders and Heartbeats. Oh my god, yeah, I did one episode of Heartbeats. <laughs> it was my first job after I left The Bill. Yeah. And it was called, I think, A Fresh Start, oh, nice, <laughs> which yeah. is quite, you know, which is quite nice, you know. Excellent. So there we go. So, um, obviously, um, so where did you first get into acting and how many years have you been acting for? Right, I have been an actor now, um, 1978, what's that, uh, 43 years. Oh, 43 years. Wow. Yeah, um, I got into acting through school, through being interested in, basically, English literature, and uh, I went to a comprehensive school outside of Portsmouth, and it stemmed from there, really. I was the kid that always got up and put his hand up for the players in, in school and, uh, and I joined this extracurricular drama class after school and then I think when I was 16 I interviewed for the National Youth Theatre and I got in. Yep. Um, I did a second year there, I had a lead in a play called England My Own and in that play they were looking for these characters for Quadrophenia, this little job called Quadrophenia yeah. and uh, I think 20 of us went up to be interviewed for for this part in Quadrophenia and I was the one they chose and that was sort of my way in oh wonderful yeah was so um, when did the, the bill come into your life then right so I kind of realized that I needed some experience because I wasn't a very experienced actor so I spent a lot of time doing theatre and um, I did another film directly after Quadrophenia and a TV series and then I started to work in theatre and work, work around the Royal Court Theatre in London with directors like uh, Max Stafford Clark, Antonia Bird and this new director, assistant director called Danny Boyle. I don't know what ever happened to Danny, really, oh, do you know uh, what I mean? No, I'm not sure. So um, during that time I, I, I did this, this play by uh, this playwright called Tony Marchant called Welcome Home and we brought it into the theatre upstairs at the Royal Court. Uh, and the producers of the of this kind of I suppose it was a pilot series called Storyboard for Terms Television had this one episode that centered around this group of policemen yeah so they took three of us from that show and put us in this pilot episode of this thing called Wooden Top which then a year later became the first series of The Bill oh wow that's wonderful yeah so that's that's how The Bill sort of happened to me for me and it, it kind of happened through theatre yeah so uh, playing a police officer did you have lots of different types of training like or was it all mainly acting it wasn't so or? wasn't sort of so much training is um, we did research yeah we did research and what we used to have was on set we had always had a police advisor oh, okay. who was a retired police officer a recently retired police officer who would then advise us on what the procedure would be yeah yeah so he was sort of telling you like the right lingo to use yeah. and the right actions and yeah. Yeah, exactly yeah the, yeah and, and the procedures etc etc because every policeman you talk to see a world of bills well, they say well i never watched the bill and then they say well you know that episode you did when such and such <laughs> yeah. happened you know um but uh, and, they, and they all say well it would never happen like that because most of police work is paperwork oh, okay yeah 90 so percent paperwork 10 percent sort of doing what they you know what they think the job is yeah um what i did like about the police training was used to have this this fellow called little malcolm little malcolm was about six foot eight and built like a barn door nice and he would give us baton training oh baton training yeah would have, give us the baton training which yeah. was quite good fun you know and we'd have kind of refresher courses in baton training every sort of six months or so. Really. <laughs> so when you were on set, did you get to drive any police cars with the blues and twos going? Well, oh, the blues and twos were put on afterwards. Well, the, the, certainly the sirens were. The, the lights used to flash, and they were they were specifically provided by a company called Action Vehicles and Action Cars. Yeah. And they were mocked up police vehicles. <laughs> now we had a panda, which was specifically a police car. So it was a kind of a stretch panda with this kind of strange thing on the back this kind of cupboard built on the back of it with an extra set of wheels so we had kind of three axles on oh, this wow. panda with enough to get a film crew in the back so that they could film the drivers of the you know what was happening yeah. inside the car um the shots the shots in the cars i mean it's quite it was quite sort of pioneering i suppose um we'd have side mounts so you get so you side mount a, a camera you know different take turn it around the other side and then a bonnet mount as well mm -hmm. now the thing with the bonnet mount is of course it restricts your visibility and then they used to put a couple of lights on it so they could see our faces yeah 
so you're kind of driving through you're looking through a kind of a gap a car about this big when you were driving the thing now i've got a funny driving story is yeah go for it god rest his soul a uh, character called um Roach lost well Tony Scannell lost his license so they needed somebody in CID to uh, to be another driver and I, I hadn't passed my car test yeah so I used to go out with Rick Rickaby of Action Vehicles um, with L plates on in a police car <laughs> as it were and learn how to drive yeah you know and I passed my test but before I passed my test we had this episode called Blind Alleys Clogged Roads and I was a provisional driver now to make it legal what they did is they put a, a production assistant assistant in the footwell yeah. of the passenger seat <laughs> <laughs> so that I was hacking his car around these roads elaborate grove with somebody in the in the in the footwell you know which is well they got away with it I suppose you know especially being the police as well I'm sure they got well, away yeah with my little Carver's Cavalier we used to, call, used to have a you know a Vauxhall Cavalier he used to drive you mm. know so so obviously you did a little bit in EastEnders as well. I did. I what actually did EastEnders? six months in EastEnders. It was good fun. I was very lucky. I got to call, I got to go away and film in France, in the north of France, which was great. I think we were out there for about three weeks, you know, which was which was cool. Um, it was a bit of a shock, uh, to tell the truth. Um, because the bill was always single camera it used to make it like a film with lots of different setups and EastEnders is a multi-camera shoot it's a studio based multi-camera shoot yeah <coughs> excuse me so um, and the expedience the speed at which they work at mm. took me by surprise and that took a bit of getting used to yeah. you know but it was it was good it was good fun there was some great characters around the time it was Minty and it was you know it was all those sort of characters and yeah. Barbara Windsor working with Barbara Windsor was lovely and Pat St. Clement and Wendy Richard oh amazing Season, yeah, right? which is my sort of my time on there, and you know, it was, yeah, had a great character and a nice storyline, and mm. you know, who knows, he might come back at some point. Yeah. We don't know. That'd do be we? awesome if you do come back. So, um, what's it like being back at a convention today? Have well, you I've not done yourself? it. Yeah, I mean, thank God after this, this this horrible lockdown that something like this can take place. Yeah. You know, and it's good fun. It's yeah. good fun. And so, what you know, the characters. <coughs> excuse me walking around you know it's um it's great i've seen josh who i made a film with josh myers yeah a few years ago and uh patrick of course i knew from way back patrick yeah. murray so yeah see some see some old mates basically you know, it's good yeah. fun you know so have you have you felt comfortable meeting the fans and doing pictures with the fans has that all been okay for you well that's been lovely because <coughs> excuse me uh, they um they're just really interested in you and they they, they you know I met Liam and uh, his mate so what was his mate called um, and they were absolute quadrophenia the 21 yeah you know and they were just asking me stories about quadrophenia and what it was like and uh, you know I was 17 so I was telling them a few stories about quadrophenia and yeah and yeah that was that was cool that was kind of cool meeting those two guys you know what I mean? awesome. yeah yeah well, thank you very much for talking today. Oh, pleasure, it was just man. a quick little talk on camera just to see how you've yeah, been. Yeah, no worries, Ben. Yeah, it's been good but, fun, you know. And so. uh, I, I can't believe you still remember my dad when I spoke <laughs> to you. Uh, yeah, now your dad runs, yeah. a, well, what, steel developments. And uh, I used to, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I am a scuba diver. We used to have an outdoor, um, an out, uh, uh, a rib. Yeah with an outboard and I was banging the prop on the bar at Littlehampton the bars the beach and at certain states of the tide you can't get over it so I'd always take the propeller for your, to your father to get it repaired yeah you know yeah. Yeah. and he did a very good job and hello dad oh, yeah, I will be showing it I already called him today and like you never guess who's here so, and he remembers like yeah. yeah I was always trotting up to him and getting our propeller repaired, uh, repaired you know <laughs> that's wonderful uh, yeah, yeah it's great great well thank you so thank much, you much. Cheers, I ben. really appreciate yeah, it no worries. see you again yeah thank you very much hope to be back alrighty <laughs>